All right, welcome everybody to a lesson on advanced idioms and phrasal verbs. This is lesson number 44. It's from a book by Ruth Gairns and Stuart Redman, and it's Oxford University Press. These words are from the book. So if you point the finger of suspicion at somebody, this is a nice easy one. It means you blame that person for something. And remember that it's point your finger at somebody, just like it's aim at, it's... Um, you know, aim, if you've got a gun, you aim it at somebody, you point it at somebody, you fire it at somebody, you shoot it at somebody. So this uh, at is very often an aggressive preposition, it seems to me. Yeah, like if you run at somebody, you're attacking them. And uh, yeah, point the finger of suspicion at somebody is quite aggressive, quite an aggressive gest gesture. But you could also point the finger of suspicion in somebody's direction. And it still means blame them, yeah? Uh, it just sounds less direct. It sounds more like indirectly blame them when it's in somebody's direction. But they're more or less the same. And I wouldn't think, I don't think there's any point in suggesting that there's a difference in meaning. Now, if somebody is a lost cause, it means they're totally hopeless, useless. They're not able to succeed in some kind of way. And they never will be because they're a lost cause. They're a waste of space. And you can also use this one, a waste of space. It means somebody totally hopeless, totally useless. Um, very similar to a lame duck down here, which means a useless person, somebody who is ineffective in their role, in their job. And so you might say the prime minister is a lame duck and it means he's totally ineffective in his role. Um, now, it's not just people that can be a lost cause. Things can be a lost cause as well. So you might say um, that uh, maybe you're planning a trip to Turkey, but maybe the firstly the airline cancels the flights. And so you get another airline, you get flights for another airline and then another pro problem crops up and then another problem crops up. And in the end, you say oh, this trip to Turkey is a lost cause something you know we'll never be able to succeed we'll never be able to get to turkey so when something is is doomed or hopeless or certain to not succeed it is a lost cause but people can be like that or things and when people are like that we usually say they have a waste of space but when things are like that you know you could say the trip to turkey is a waste of time yeah because every time we try to plan it something some problem some obstacle um, appears and so yeah the trip to Turkey is a waste of time it's a lost cause okay I hope I've made that all clear yeah when something is certain not to succeed it is a lost cause and when somebody is certain not to succeed he or she is a lost cause a waste of space now maybe you're on a football team and you're playing formidable opponents really strong opponents um, you might need you know it, it looks like you're definitely going to lose yeah it looks like the next game is a lost cause, but you find out about a fantastic player, a striker who who scores loads and loads and loads of goals. And he wants to play on your team. And you think this might just give us a fighting chance against this formidable opponent. Yeah, we often say this as well, formidable opponent, a very strong opponent. You have a formidable opponent. So that player, that brilliant player gives you a fighting chance. So a fighting chance is just one chance, one chance that you will succeed in spite of major problems, major difficulties or major challenges. OK, if something is a drop in the ocean, then it is not nearly enough. Yeah, one drop of water in the entire ocean. Um, it's a negligible amount. So maybe you owe somebody, maybe you owe the, uh, the mafia uh, 250,000 pounds. And somebody offers to lend you £1,000 and you say, thanks, but it's just a drop in the ocean. It's not enough to, it's not even nearly enough uh, to, to help solve your problem. And so, yeah, that would be just a drop in the ocean. It's not nearly enough. But you can use this metaphor in loads of different situations when something is not nearly enough. And so maybe you're trying to protect the environment. You're trying to protect the local forest. And uh, you do certain things, but the things you do are not nearly enough to save the, the, the wildlife inside that forest from, I don't know, from, uh, from the problems that it's having. Um, so 
yeah, you might, perhaps you uh, try to stop people going in the forest and you think that that will help conserve the wildlife, but it's just a drop in the ocean because there are so many other problems. It's not just people going in there. Maybe there's air pollution, loads and loads of air pollution from lo local factories. And so just stopping people going in the forest is a drop in the ocean. It's not nearly enough to solve the problem. Now, the green belt is just the area of land around the city, which is green, which is the forests, the fields, the ocean, not the oceans, but the forests and the fields, the green areas, the environment, the natural environment with no buildings and no human habitats, yeah, no human residences. Now, if something is a hot potato, it's a highly controversial topic. Yeah, If there's some topic which a politician doesn't want to discuss and he doesn't want the journalist to ask him about, that's a hot potato. He doesn't want to touch it. Yeah, The idea, this metaphor, is that nobody wants to touch a hot potato. Nobody wants to talk about a highly controversial topic because they don't want to give their opinion because they know that if as soon as they open their mouth, their enemies will take those words and say, ah, oh, look, that person believes this awful thing. Yeah, you can think of lots of highly controversial topics, especially over the last couple of years. And many of them, you know, I saw a, a politician, he's actually wants to be prime minister of this country. But one of the journalists was asking him why a few months ago he was arguing that people should be dragged out of their homes and put into camps if they didn't uh, if they didn't test sorry if they if they tested positive for a certain disease and this was a highly controversial position um he seemed to be praising um a, a system of governance that would mean putting people into camps into labor camps um it sounded rather bizarre to me and i can't believe that this guy wants to be prime minister and even has a good chance when he has these highly controversial views on how people should be treated anyway he's a the, the current prime minister is a lame duck which means he's really ineffective it means he's a waste of space a total lost cause no one has any faith in him and no one has any trust in him and it's because he has lied so many times such as when he told us a certain medicine was safe and effective and so this guy is a lame duck he's going to be out very very soon we all know it within the next six months our current prime minister won't be here anymore there'll be somebody else there and hopefully it won't be this highly controversial guy who wants to put us into labor camps if we're not healthy now one more word, use of the word lame is a lame excuse it's a good one a lame excuse is a terrible excuse a rubbish excuse like the dog ate my homework that would be a lame excuse and when your teacher asks you for your homework and you say oh yeah the dog ate it sir you are fobbing your teacher off with a lame excuse. It's a good phrasal verb and fob somebody off, it means just get rid of them with some kind of 